behind Tash from Heart and Design. So we're going to go into the beachscape here. Um, I've already drawn it. Now the first thing you need to do is get a kneadable eraser. This is on watercolour paper. So just draw with a normal pencil on watercolour paper. Uh, I tend to buy all my paper in sheets. I don't like to take a big sketchbook out with me, which is why I've created the Chameleon sketchbooks, because you have your sketchbook and you just take what you want and need, so it's always changing. And then you leave it home when you're finished and then you take a new bit out with you again. Now, that's cleared away the deep marks of the pencil, so we can go in and paint now with watercolours that are quite transparent and it won't be too in your face in the pencil marks, you don't want to see them too much. So I've actually got a sandy colour already mixed from my last tutorial, so I'm going to go in and use that because in this painting it is actually quite a nice um, calm pale sandy colour that I chose. Now all of these images are on my tutorial sheets and my designs and in the future as I get busier I do hope to get help with that but they will still all be my ideas even if I haven't had time to do them myself. Um, but it will be me on the videos, it will be me doing the tutorials but designing the sheets hopefully somebody else will be able to do one day. Now that's the sandy sea done it looks a bit more orangey on the screen than it is it's not that orange it's quite pale so the next thing i need to do is i think i'm gonna do hmm, i'm gonna do some sky because it doesn't quite meet that beach color and what i don't want i really don't want it to meet that beach color because it will dribble in so I'm going to try and go around and just fill in now you can do wet on wet where I would have just put water everywhere and just I'm going to try not to go around those seagulls go over them because it's very difficult to put white back in on top of water colors um, you can get something that you put on there a masking fluid which will keep the paper white like a layer that's hidden that you can't really see and then when you finish you can peel it off and the white will still be there but these really are just quick tutorials for you to have a little practice at and when you come to do something like this for real you can use masking fluid it's just another thing to buy that you don't really have to if you don't need to you know if you're going down the expert route then I would okay so I put a nice bit of sky in I don't really want to do any more than that I'm going to leave it like that uh, I, I want it to be nice and pale now I am going to dry so that I can get the sea in the background if I don't dry it they will blend into the paint that I've already put down and it will become a hot mess so I want this to actually be quite a very subtle watercolour so there isn't much pigment I want it to be kind of watery this time sometimes I put a lot of pigment down and sometimes I make them really watery but we're by the beach it's a seaside scene so let's be watery nearly done Okay, so I'm now going to mix a darker blue and I need to make sure it's watery so I am adding water. Um, I'm also going to get a littler brush that I've got here so that I can go in with that darker blue in this background here. I am going to try and keep it as like a stripe because it's just fun. Just keep going in when it's run out and keep adding it. So there you go. I mean, if you've got a, a bigger watercolour brush like the one I had, you can actually use the tip of that anyway, but I just didn't want to. I'm going to go right up to where that parasol is. There we go. So give it another dry.
the next thing we're going to do is the next blue so we will go on to another darker um sorry another bigger brush but the blue will be hmm what color should i go for that it's too like the other one let's go for like a greeny blue yeah let's do that one because that's not there anywhere i'm going to use my bigger brush and i'm kind of just going to use it to guide it along okay i'm being really watery with it if i get any clumps i can just push them back push them away keep pushing the paint round I do hope at some point just to do like a full course of how to use watercolors but in these we're just we're just playing really <laughs> these are beginner beginner tutorials they're just for a bit of fun okay now you might be thinking that looks a bit messy well they all go through trust me they all go through a stage of being a hot mess they really do uh right so I'm going to get a um, more of a medium sized brush now. I'm going to go straight into the red. I need some red over here on this side of the parasol. I love that. Let's get it watered down a little bit. Spread it down, water it down. There we go. Love that. Nice and bright. Okay. Now, again, I can't do any more next to that because otherwise it would spread everywhere. I'm just kind of choosing my colours as I go. I'm not trying to mix it to be perfectly like what they've got there. I'm just looking at what colours I've got and thinking, is that close enough? Don't worry too much. It's your painting after all. It's your drawing. Now, be careful of what I've just done because I had paint on my hand and it's, uh, yeah, it's a pain. Once it's done, it's done with watercolour. So don't do that. <laughs> don't be me i'm doing so many videos today that i've got paint everywhere so yeah definitely do not do that okay we'll dry that and then we'll go into the middle bit like a light orange so let's get a light orange mixed up I'm gonna add a bit more white there like that it's almost like a peachy color right so then I'm gonna use that to come down and finish the whole of that section in can you see I think my hand was in the way now normally I would take down watercolor sheets because the the water does make it buckle and bend and twist but um, yeah, you don't have to. Oh, what a shame I got that pink up in the sky. So yeah, be careful of that. Now, um, let's do the bucket and spade. Again, it's a little bit of red. But I don't want it to be too in your face. That's nice. Red bucket. That's all I want. Just a hint of a bucket and I think the, the handle and that of the that's it of the spade that's red as well okay don't worry if it spills in because it is kind of the same thing in a minute when we go over it in pen you won't notice that right now we're going to do the towel so we do have Again, the red in stripes, it's very similar to the parasol, very similar colours. Again, just play with it, push it around a bit. I'm going to do another stripe there. <coughs> oh, my glasses fell off my head. Put them back up there. Right, I'm just taking some from here, putting it into the other sections where it's not looking as bright. I think I have some of that purple. Where's that purple one that I used? I'm going to use that here. Again, I've forgotten to dry because I'm so impatient. Uh, 
I love the watery feel of how this is working out though. Love it. And then I am going to come in with some more purple there because we kind of lost it into the red. And a bit more here. It's nice. And what was the other colour? Oh, it's that nice peachy colour that we had on the parasol. Let's try that. There, there, and there. Love it! Okay, now I would normally be a lot more detailed with what I'm painting, but because this is going is an illustration rather than a painting, it's going to have black marker on it to redraw everything. I know. Let's um, let's turn this mark into a kite shape, and then at least it doesn't look so ugly. <laughs> And we'll have it in the sky. See, sometimes you get happy mistakes. And we'll have it in the sky. And somebody over there is flying their kite. <laughs> okay. There. I like that. Sometimes these accidents are happy accidents. Right, now we've got the seagulls there. And although they are white, nothing is completely white in this world. So I'm just going to add in some grey where they are okay just adding some more gray in um there i like that some little seagulls in the sky oh that's nice I've just added in some of that brownie colour. Right, so you can kind of see them now, but in a minute when we redraw everything, you'll see them really well. Now, what I have realised, I'm going to use my little brush to go into this space where you, the sand would have been. And then inside, I need like a pinky colour. So I'm going to mix a bit of that in with the red. Oh, can, can you see? Yeah, so I'm just mixing some of that in with that and I'm going to keep going until I'm happy a bit more and that can be the inside of the bucket there okay right now when we draw the over it we can draw the handle back in um, now what we're going to do with my fine detail brush is the I think we'll do the parasol stand now I'm tempted to do it black because it is in the picture, but I'm not going to. It's outlined black, but the middle is white. So I'm just going to use a little bit of grey because everything is so subtle in colours on here. I've actually really enjoyed this one. <laughs> Some tutorials I really enjoy and others not so much, but this one. Yeah, it's been fun. Okay, um, let's do the sun. It's just nice to be able to do what I love and, and help each other and help others to learn. I've got still got so much to learn myself, but I've certainly gained enough knowledge now, I feel, to be able to share it and help anyone that's at that beginner stage. So now I'm coming in with some nice marks for the sunshine. That will dry a bit lighter. So I'm going to dry the whole thing now. And then we can go over it and get the illustrations to pop with the marker pen. It always flies away when I put this on. So I'm going to move the paints away. We don't need that anymore. It's always handy, by the way, as well, to have some spare paper here so you can just swatch out the paints on there and just check that you've got the colours right, like I did with the water. I wanted to make sure it was like a completely different type of blue. We're nearly there. Bucket's a bit wet. <laughs> and I love how with watercolour you can put it down. It doesn't go where you want it to go necessarily. It does its own thing. And that makes it nice and loose. And each one's individual. Okay, so 
you're going to get the black pen and what I'm going to say to you rather than trying to move your arm around remember you can move the paper make sure you are always moving the paper around so we're going to go round with the parasol and draw the different sections in and it doesn't matter if the paint has gone over where your line was you know that's the joy of watercolor i think people expect that anyway um, you're always going to have those moments i kind of like it anyway kind of like it like that there we are so we do the birdies get the birds in the sky these lovely seagulls they like to come and nick our chips get the kite in which was an unexpected addition <laughs> wasn't expecting that we'll do some tassels from it okay i'm not sure if that looks like a kite or a rocket <laughs> but anyway um so now i'm going to draw the waves of the water there we go i'm just missing the parasol um leg there so when i draw it in it will look like the sea is actually behind remember these aren't paintings as such they are illustrations yes we're using paint but i'm not really going into too much detail remember this is a level two um illustration on my classes online heartanddesign.org.uk um because there's more detail than the very beginner one, which is the one star. And I think it's really important to know where you're at and to practice where you're at before you try and move on. I think that's the biggest learning lesson when I was learning was I was trying to do too much too quickly. And what I hope to do is to guide everyone through from just starting to draw to actually getting into painting. You actually don't have to know how to draw to paint. I must admit I learned to paint first and then drawing came after, but it does help if you can. Um, I've just realised the things I've missed. I mean, I could leave the, tea ta the, the beach towel as it is, but I'm going to draw the lines on. Make sure they're wibbly as they would be if they were on a beach. There we go. Do you know what we can do as well? Should we put some little beach towel tassels on? There we go. What about that? <laughs> yeah, I've enjoyed doing this one. This has been fun. Fun, fun, fun. I'd love to do something like that, actually, that is a bit bit more realistic and leave it without the pen and leave it as an actual painting, not just an illustration. And you could do that too. So you use this for anything. You could put it on the front of a card. You can have it in your uh, sketchbook, your scrapbooks. You can use it in any of your crafting that you're doing. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll see you back here for the next one. Take care, everyone. I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe.